All right, let's get rolling with part 13. In this part, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the flip flop node. So this is another node that I was talking about where it's going to help us as we kind of work our way up to making a light switch that you can flip on and off using box triggers, widgets, a bunch of other things. So in a quick summary, what a flip flop node does is it will take one event and then there are two different outcomes that can happen and it just goes back and forth. So the first one flips, next one flops. It's pretty straightforward. So I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you learn something. All right, let's get going here. So games next first person next blueprint we'll call tut 13 flip flop node great okay so like the other tutorials we're going to be using widgets as just a visual representation of what's happening so widget blueprint we'll call this cycle one now we'll go in here we don't want to duplicate it right away because it can just save us some time if we do all of the work in one of them and then we duplicate it instead of duplicating it right off the bat so horizontal box let's drop that in bring that over text drop that into the horizontal box we're going to horizontally align the center vertically fill and we're going to call this one cycle or sorry the text is going to be cycle one and we'll make the font pretty big here so let's let's see like what 100 looks like I think that's pretty good. So let's save that, exit out of this. And now we're gonna duplicate and automatically it becomes cycle two. So we'll save that one. We're gonna just pop it open. And then we're going to click on this part here where it says text. So if you don't see this, make sure that you actually have this selected. So the text box over here, or you can click on in the center. It won't show up if you have this horizontal box selected. So that should be good save okay let's open up the level blueprints and what we're going to do is keyboard event x then we go from the release we'll do remove all widgets and from the pressed we will do a flip flop node a is going to go to create widget this will be cycle one and then B will go create widget again, move this down a little bit and we'll call this cycle two. And we're going to right click on this return value from to variable, right click this and we can change the variable names up here to cycle one. And then we will change this to cycle two from here. What we can do is go add to oops add to view port. And then these can just plug right into the same ones here. And so we can call this, maybe we'll go cycling effect. And we'll just go here, remove widgets. So that one's kind of straightforward. I'm just kind of getting people a little more used to commenting because I do think that's extremely important when the nodes get more complicated, not only for the ability to move them all together, but just for looking at them visually. This one obviously says remove all widgets, but you kind of get the point of what I'm going for. So I think that this should work and we can hit compile up here and save it just to make sure that it's all it's all going. I believe that this is good to give it a test. As usual, we'll go to the new editor window. Pull this up, move around a little bit. Now I'm going to hit X for the first time. Cycle one. I'm going to take my hand off of X. I'm going to hit it again. And so the problem that we have here is that it's they're both going at the same time. So what we want to do is this. Add to viewport. And add to viewport. I just, I know I did it wrong the first time, but I figured that that'd be the best way for people to kind of understand what's happening instead of me just saying, like, don't do it like that. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's all I just wanted to show you with that. So let's try this again. 
Now, as you can see, so holding X, letting it go, holding X, letting it go. It's cycling back and forth. And I just, yeah, I really wanted to just show people how that works like that because I feel like that's something that is like a very easy little problem that you run into where you plug something into the same node and you go, oh, there's no problem with the compiler because technically Unreal Engine doesn't have a problem with that. It's just not going to give you the result that you want. And those kind of problems are the thing that I think makes Unreal Engine so difficult to learn, at least at the beginning, because there's so many little things that can go wrong. And then when you try and type that into Google, it's it's just not always clear and you can't always find the answers. You have to find it yourself. I am going to be throwing a couple of those in throughout the tutorial series. Uh, I just thought that that was a good little example that a lot of people may think is actually a shortcut, but it's actually just making it much, much harder. So I hope you enjoyed this part. We will be looking at part 14 next, which we're going to be looking at the branch node. Uh, if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up. And if this is the first time you've checked out one of the Unreal Engine tutorial series, I'd really recommend going back to the first video if you haven't watched them because uh, we are going to be going through linearly. So if you've never started with Unreal Engine before and you want to now, then we can get you in the right spot for Unreal Engine 5. Uh, speaking on that, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button and join us for future videos. I'm going to leave the video there for the night. I'll see you in part 14, and I really hope this video helped you out.